Good morning, my name is Clint, and today we will be discussing how the Yakuza series reusing assets is actually a good thing. When you boot up Yakuza Like a Dragon, you find yourself in the beautiful and dense open world of Yokohama Ijensho, a comparatively small yet richly detailed open world. Yokohama is home to basically everything you'd expect from a bustling Japanese city. It is littered with locations that are both important and unimportant to Yakuza Like a Dragon's story and its gameplay. Like a Dragon is the seventh mainline game in the Yakuza series, eighth if you include the prequel Yakuza 0. Like a Dragon is the first game in the series for the majority of the game to take place in an entirely new location. Yakuza 0, Yakuza 1 through to 6, and the detective spin-off Judgment all primarily take place in the same open world map, the fictional city of Kamarocho. Occasionally, these games will dip into other locations, like Sotenburi and Okinawa, but these locations feel like extra additional areas rather than the game's core location. The same map of Kamarocho has been the main setting for the Yakuza series since the beginning. It has slowly changed and evolved as the games got better graphically, while largely staying the same in terms of its scope and layout. This is unusual for a series of open world games, as most other open world games have a completely new location for each new game in the series. So is the Like a Dragon studio just saving some money by repurposing old assets? Or is there a benefit to returning to the same open world map over and over again? By reusing the same map throughout most of the series, different places in the world of Yakuza gain new context and depth, a sense that this world actually exists, that is not found in almost any other video game series. For an example of places gaining context as the series continues returning to the same locations, let's look at Shangri-La in Kamurocho. Shangri-La is a pretty unique looking building located near the right hand corner of the map. To Kiryu, the main protagonist of the first six Yakuza games, this building isn't that important. It's a soapland, a kind of brothel crossed with a spa, that the lovable Majima wrecks with a dump truck in the first game. Shangri-La shows up in the story only a couple more times after that throughout the rest of the series in various states of disrepair. It is by no means one of the more important locations to Kiryu's story. Shangri-La's purpose shifts throughout the series no matter how minor. It feels like a location that is changing subtly as the series progresses. It feels like a real place, being repurposed, reused, and at times laying dormant. It exists whether it has importance to the story or not. Shangri-La gains a much larger sense of history and a newfound importance after you play Yakuza Like a Dragon. This location is where Like a Dragon's protagonist Ichiban was born. This is where his story started. Retroactively, the series gives even more history to this location. Shangri-La may not have had much importance to Kiryu's story, it has even less importance to Judgment's protagonist Yagami. But after playing Like a Dragon, every time you return to Kamurocho, there is now a new sense of nostalgia and history baked into this location. You know that this building is important to Ichiban, and therefore it gains an added importance to the player. This is true for so many locations in the Yakuza franchise. Every location feels like it has a story attached to it. Even buildings that the story hasn't yet touched feel like they have a story behind them, even if it is one that we haven't heard yet. Knowing then that any door in the city could be opened at any point, whether it is in this game that you are currently playing, or a yet unreleased game set in that world, adds a sense of importance to every single location. It feels like something is going on behind those closed doors, that stories are being told somewhere off frame, whether you'll eventually be part of those stories or not. Lost Judgment, the detective spin-off of the Yakuza franchise, came out after Like a Dragon and was also set in Yakuza's newest city, Yokohama. This is the first time we've had a chance to come back to Yokohama since it debuted in Like a Dragon. When this was announced, I was excited to return to Yokohama, I wanted to see how that city looked and felt through the eyes of Judgment's protagonist, Yagami. What new perspectives would Yagami bring to the same open world map that I'd rigorously explored only a year before as Ichiban? In Like a Dragon, Ichiban's story starts with him being left for dead and living in a homeless shelter in Yokohama. 
he spends his time with the downtrodden and those whose society has given up on. While Yagami's adventures in Yokohama involve him attempting to solve a murder related to the local high school. While Ichiban spends his time with homeless people, sex workers and gang members, Yagami spends his time with fellow detectives, high school students, cops and lawyers. Despite both Yagami and Ichiban's stories taking place in the same streets, they feel like they exist in entirely different worlds. The locations that you visit, while mostly the same, are viewed from an entirely different perspective. The Survive Bar, which acted as a home to Like a Dragon's protagonist Ichiban, is just another bar to Yagami. Its staff that were so important to Ichiban's story have nothing to do with Yagami's. In Yagami's story, they're just NPCs that you can buy a drink from. While playing as Yagami, you can't pick up the microphone in the corner and play karaoke like you could with Ichiban and his friends. The context of this space, the context of the survive bar and how it is used in each game is entirely different. There's no cameo moment here to add extra importance or fan service to visiting the survive bar as Yagami. There's no moment where Ichiban and Yagami share a drink, and there's no real reason to think that there would be. These two characters are from two completely different worlds, despite sharing the same space. Their stories don't have a reason to intertwine. Even though it feels like at any moment, Ichiban could just walk into the bar. If he did, Yagami likely wouldn't even notice him. To Yagami, he'd just be some guy with a weird haircut and a funny suit. Yagami has no idea about how important this location is to someone else's story. And if you haven't played Like a Dragon, then you wouldn't either. This creates a sense that this world is not built for either one of these characters. The city itself exists first. It feels like there were stories taking place here well before either of our protagonists arrived, and that these stories continue to take place out of sight and after we leave the city itself feels real. If Lost Judgment was set in a new city that was designed just for Yagami and his story, then it would have no reason to include seemingly irrelevant locations like the homeless shelter, the survive bar, or the Hello Work building. It would be a location designed just for him to explore. It would not feel as real and as alive as Yokohama does now, as Yagami's story would be the only one that mattered in that city. You would not have the feeling that the world continues to exist whether Yagami is in it or not. Details implying that the world exists outside of Yagami's story might not have been worth the development time to create. But in reusing these assets, the Like a Dragon studio has an incentive to create a world with as much detail as possible so that it can continue to be the setting for numerous stories to come, leading to a much deeper, richer, open world. If each new Yakuza game took place in an entirely new city, an entirely new open world, we would lose this sense of place that Yakuza has so lovingly crafted over time, and we might end up with less detailed locations as a result. Yokohama is a living and breathing city filled with stories taking place behind closed doors, doors that you might never get to open, stories taking place in alleyways that you might simply walk past. You don't know what seemingly unimportant building might later reveal its secrets to you, or what stories might change the context of a particular place. Everything in Yakuza's world feels like there's a story behind it. Either a story that has already happened, a story that is happening just outside of view, or a story that is yet to take place. So reusing assets, at least in the same way that the Yakuza franchise does, is actually a good thing.